Hello friends, this is my response to Dan from Canada's uh, latest thread. And we'll go ahead and just jump into it. Do you consider yourself more of a collector or an audiophile? I can definitely consider myself more of a collector. I love the sound of music and um, like to appreciate fine music. But um, the focus is mostly on um, just, you know, absorbing the music as well as the records, you know, the the covers, the artwork, the history, the trivia, I love all that. If I were rich, I'd be an audiophile because I could afford to be. And that's the main reason why I'm not. As a small child, when we would go to the library, I would uh, look at those audio magazines that were made for rich white people. No offense to anyone, but that's who they were for. You know, remember I'm from the 60s, I'm a child of the 60s. Back in the 60s, black people, very few could afford that stuff, you know. And it was just like another world to me, which I would love to have entered, but it's just so expensive. And um, between the two things, um, I'd rather spend the money on the records, have something halfway decent to play them on, but I'd rather spend the money on the records. Which moves to number two. How protective are you of your records? There was a time when I felt protective. Um, frankly, when... Um, in the 90s, when I was buying CDs big time, I didn't like to loan them out um, before I had a computer and could burn them and things. I was really protective of them. But as far as the records, I I don't feel the need to be protective because like uh, I heard some of the other folks say, most people don't even really uh, pay attention. I mean... Thankfully, as a musician, my musician friends are interested in my collection. And when I have listening sections, sessions or when people come over, we listen to music. And um, I encourage people to browse my records, please. Um, because I don't hang around a lot, of, uh, a lot of people in my home, I know who's coming and going. So the people that are here, I trust. They're welcome to put on records. I don't really hang around people I would consider chowderheads or, or assholes or, or idiots. And you know, there's some, in every, there, there's a lot of people like that who I just won't have them in my house anymore. You know what I'm saying? So that if you get in my house, then, um, then I, yeah, you'll be cool to look at my records. I, I really want you to look at the records, actually. I, I do. I like that when people are interested in the collection. Number three, do you hang on to records that you no longer listen to? And the answer is yes. It depends, though. It, you see, um, collection, a collection is like, um, it's like a wardrobe. It's an expression of you. And some, even though life isn't permanent, there are aspects of my collection that I consider permanent. In other words, as long as I'm around, these records will be in my collection. Things like my Genesis and... Um, Faust and Can and stuff like that. These are records that were hard. Yeah, it's like they were hard earned, you know. And so they're part of a, a library. I see my collection as a library. The stuff that I get rid of that I don't listen to anymore is stuff that I just don't value. But I'll give an example of something I haven't listened to in a long time, but I, I'm not going to sell it. And that's Simple Minds, specifically their second album. I got turned on to Simple Minds when their first album came out, um, before they were even heard of, I saw the record, liked the purple uh, shades of the cover, and said, I want to like this, and I bought it. And I didn't like it. And I kept going back to it saying, I want to like this. And I finally did. By the time they put out the second album, Real to Real Cacophony, I loved it. And so do I play those records? No. But am I going to sell them? No. Are there some records in my collection that could get the boot still? Yes, yes, but many of these records are like a library, and it's like they, I'm, I'm proud to own them, and don't mind saying it like that, yeah, proud to own them, because they just mean that much to me, and at one time, they were the center of my universe, and they're permanent. So, number four, show five of your favorite, most cherished seven inches, and that was tough, because I have a lot of seven inches. Um... Probably have, probably have 2,045s at least, at the very, very least. I don't count, but just judging by the amount of room they take, I know I've got a ton. So 
two of the five that I'll show today, because it would change somewhat, are by Genesis, because Genesis really are like my. For some people, like the Beatles, it's Genesis for me. Even if I don't listen to them a lot anymore, they just mean that much to me. And so, a couple singles of theirs that I have that I'm very, very happy to own are, I have this promo copy of The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. And it's a mono stereo. Let me turn this around. So, yeah, I forget where I found this. I've had this for probably 20 plus years. This is one where I can, now I can sort of answer the baby's uh, thread about so being soiled. This is definitely one of those records when I saw it, I about shit my pants. You know what I'm saying? Genesis, Peter Gabriel era on 45, really hard to come across. A promo on top of that. So that was one that I probably shit. And there's another one when I found it. On a charisma, no less. I know what I like. A charisma promo. Yeah, this is another one where I'm extremely happy to have this. And proud of it. Don't remember where I found it. Have had it probably 30 plus years. Those are real, real special to me and precious. Um, the other three that I've chosen are just as precious. I've shown this before. I used to be a member of the Residence uh, fan club. And one year for um, a completely unexpected, they sent all of us a copy of Santa Dog 78. A re remake of Santa Dog. And I got it in the mail completely unexpected for Christmas one that year, 1978. I know these are hard to come by. I don't know what they're worth. Don't don't necessarily care. I mean, when would uh, am I? I think I'm like. Are you guys like me when we talk about monetary value of a record? It's just fun to talk about. I don't care that it's really worth that. I don't want to spend it. I hate spending a lot of money on the records I have to spend on. I will if I have it and really want it. But that's not what's important. It's just kind of fun to talk about. But yeah, Santa Dog '78. So on the one side you have the remake. And on the other side, you have the original Santa Dog. And this is definitely one of um, my prized 45s. I could have done all five of these on Miles Davis, but um, I tried to. So these, okay. Another prized 45. I got it when it first came out. I had to order it because Omaha was behind the times. I hadn't even caught up yet. I had to order it. Cabaret Voltaire. Extended play. This is their first 45 early early release on rough trade records let me see if i can tell you which one this is this is their third release this is the third release on the rough trade records label i had to mail order this to get it um i read about this in the new musical express um can almost quote the uh article i was talking about new uh, there it was a, like a new wave of music sheffield Human League, Cabaret Voltaire, stuff like that. And I could tell by what they were saying I needed I needed to hear this. And and this is, this is, even though Cabaret Voltaire went farther beyond this, the primitiveness of this, um, this is still probably my favorite Cabaret, Cabaret Voltaire record. I love this. It's very primitive and very, very, very affecting. This is definitely one of my prized pieces. This is an original. And my last one that I'll show that is a prize, I think I've shown it before, is um, another promo. Can. Moonshake. It's a one-sided promo. I got the picture sleeve, but only have Moonshake because it's a promo. It's a mono-stereo promo. And that's the radio station. It must have come from KDCV. God knows where that is. It's not Omaha. But it's a mono-stereo promo, so you don't get, uh, you don't get uh, future days edit love to find that but this is this has got to be hard to find and it's just something that i prize very very much those are my five of my uh top 45s and number five do you ever feel like people cannot relate to your interest in records well absolutely that's why i love this vinyl community so much and I finally found y'all you know we finally found each other um i knew jeff record man 1958 back in the end of the 70s and then we lost touch we just recently reconnected about a year ago. So glad that I reconnected with Jeff because he is someone who can come over here and go gaga over records and music with me. 
I uh, used to have a Friday night listening uh, party every Friday for years. It's probably been 12 years ago that it stopped. And that would be my main cadre of friends. We'd play Risk on the computer. I'd play music for them. They'd express interest in it. That's how I ended up with this shelf. Matter of fact, the quick story is one of my friends, Craig, who doesn't collect records at all, but we were musicians together as teens. Um, he's a good friend. We don't hang out like we used to, but he used to be one of my best friends. And, um, you know, he was over here every Friday playing Risk and hanging out listening to music and just basically tearing down on a Friday. And one Christmas, out of the blue, he comes over and says, Derek, I got your Christmas present for you. You got time. And I said, uh, yeah, what? And he comes in with all this uh, lumber and assembles. All this time while we'd been playing Risk, he had been secretly taking measurements and plotting and planning Um the building of this 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 wall unit for me uh, I can't thank him enough but that was back in a time when uh, we were a little bit younger um, my friends kids were still very young and they had a little bit of time so that's another reason why this vinyl community is so important to me because I do feel like there are people here that at least partially if not fully understand what this madness is all about <laughs> But here in Omaha, people that I work with, in general, do they understand? Can they relate? Doesn't seem like it. So I really value the vinyl community. I want to go ahead again and thank Collector of Music, Mr. Hall of Fame and Dan from Canada. Dan in Canada, you guys were the three that I discovered and made me want to become a part of this. Thank you guys so much for being there. 